vklad novostno univerzijo v Ljubljani smo se odločili pripraviti takve informativni dan, ki bo malo širši. Zato smo povabili tudi ene tuje goste, ki imajo že več izkušenj na tem področju. Tako da danes boste zvedeli, zakaj smo sploh ustanovili tak sklad na univerzijo v Ljubljani, kakšni so rezultati sklada, ki že 15 let deluje na univerzijo v Gentu. Predstavili pa vam bomo tudi vidik investitorja. To se pravi, kako investitor gleda na projekte, ki so šli, tako da rečem, čez takšno financiranje in ki so naredili tako imenovani proof of concept. Na koncu pa bomo bolj praktični in se bomo lotili od tega, kar vas seveda vse najbolj zanima. Peljali vas bomo čez pogoje prvega razpisa in obecijskega sklada na Univerziju Ljubljani. Od blizu bomo pogledali, kakšen je proces prijave in proces ocenjevanja prijave. Najprej pa k uvodnim besedam vabim profesor dr. Tanjo Dmitrovič, prorektorica za prenos znanja na Univerziju Ljubljani. Tanja, povrej. Ja, dober dan vsem skupaj. Lep pozdrav v imenu vodstva Univerze v Ljubljani. Te od mene veseli, da smo prišli tako daleč, da je na vrsti informativni dan za razpis inovacijskega sklada, ki je že odprt. Na Univerze v Ljubljani nastaja zelo veliko znanja in inovativnih rešitev, ki ponujejo odgovore na najrazličnejše probleme na področju na vseh področjih, ki jih na univerzih pokrivamo in teh področjih, kot vemo, je izjemno veliko. Na vkljub bistveno manjših finančnim sredstvom pri merjavi z univerzami v Tujini smo pri tem relativno uspešni. Manj uspešni pa smo potem pri prenosu tega znanja v gospodarstvo, sploh znanja, ki ne nastaja v sodelovanju z podjetji oziroma drugimi deležniki, v različnih laboratorijih, predvsem na tehnoloških fakultetah in pa mogoče tudi nekaterih naravoslovnih. Prav pomankanje ostreznega financiranja je pogosto razlog, da te inovacije pri pogosto ne pridejo do trga, čeprav odgovarjajo na relevantne izzive in ponujajo tudi primerne rešitve za te izzive. Že faza preverjanja in validacije koncepta je pogosto nedosegljiva. Želja nas v vodstvu univerze je, da čim več inovacij doživi tudi preverbo na trgu in s tem potrdi tako vaše delo, pored delo raziskovalcev, hkrati pa ponudi v resnici možnost, da se del sredstev, ki jih država in s tem družba namenjajo za razvoj tudi povrne. Tudi na ta način lahko univerza dokazuje svojo vrednost v družbi in pokaže, da je res gonilo razvoja. Pa ne le v tehniki, ampak tudi v narosloju, v družbosloju, v humanistiki in tudi v umetnosti. Zato smo prvi, če zdaj po stotih letih obstaja naše univerze, ustanovili sklad, ki bo imel kljub zelo skromnim sredstvom, ki smo jih lahko v ta sklad zdaj v tej prvi fazi namenili, cilj, da nudi podporo trčno usmerjenim rešitvam, ki jih razvijemo na ULA in poskušamo pripeljati inovacije s trčnim potencijalom do tiste stopnje, ko postanejo zanimive za investitorje. S tem se dejansko približujemo tudi ciljem nove evropske finančne perspektive, ki je v temu področju namenjena veliko pozornosti in tudi sredstev, ki bojo pač, mislim, da v okviru evropskega investicijskega sklada delili. Na ta način poskušamo ustvariti neke vrste pilot, torej neke vrste učilnico, ki nam bo pomagala k višji stopni uspešnosti, ko se bomo prijavljali na razpise za to vrstna evropska sredstva. Moram reči, da tudi mene izjemno veseli, da je tak velik odziv na današnji informativni dan. Vsem vam želim veliko uspeha, najprej pri vašem raziskovalnem delu, potem pri razvoju inovativnih rešitev in ne nazadnje tudi uspeha pri prijavi. In verjamem pa, tudi trdno v to, da je že sam proces, ko boste poskušali napisati prijavo, vam bo v pomoč pri razmisleku o tem, kakšni so lahko nadaljni koraki na poti razvoja vaših inovativnih rešitev do trga. Torej, jaz vam želim uspešen informativni dan, pripričena sem, da bodo predstavitve, ki so jih v pisarni za prenos znanja pripravili in gostje, ki so jih povabili, lahko ponudili veliko zanimivih idej, tudi potencijalnih rešitev tako naprej in res upam, da bomo s tem prvim 
razpisom skupaj, vsi skupaj uspešni in da bomo v naslednjih letih lahko temu namenili tudi več finančnih sredstev. Tako da, hvala lepa. Sanja, najlepša hvala za te tvoje lepe obvodne besede in spodbudne. Um, sedaj pa nadaljujemo s primerom dobre prakse iz Univerze v Gentu. Next, Ms. Ingrid Mercier will present 15 years of experience of managing POC fund at the University of Ghent. Ingrid is a manager of Industrial Research Fund and Tech Transfer Advisor at Tech Transfer Office of Ghent University. Ingrid, please take us through your experience and lessons learned in this past 15 years. Thank you very much for this nice introduction. Thank you also for the invitation. I'm very, very honored to be part of this Info Day uh, and um, the implementation of the Innovation Fund at the uh, University of Ljubljana. Um, I will um, share my screen. You should be able to see my PowerPoint presentation now. Yes, yes, yes. We are. Okay. And then I'm trying to go to the presentation mode. Okay. So in 15 minutes, I will try to give you an introduction of um, how we evolved with our proof of concept fund during the past 15 years. But first of all, just a few introductory words on our university. Um, we have 44,000 students. We're based um, somewhere centered in Belgium, and we're one of the five Flemish universities. So we're based in the Flemish speaking part of uh, Belgium. We have 11 faculties and we have about 8,000 uh, researchers of which uh, 1,300 uh, professors, 5,000 pre-doctoral researchers and uh, postdoctoral researchers. Uh, we have, uh, in fact, a dual structure at our university. We have the Central Tech Transfer Office where I'm based as the coordinator of the Industrial Research Fund. And we have the more decentralized structures of uh, what we call business developers. Uh, these people are based decentrally within the faculties. Our experts are mostly coming from industry. So are bringing industrial experience back to the university in order to help us uh, stimulating innovation and bringing our technology um, to the industry. Uh, back in 2004, the Industrial Research Fund was introduced by the Flemish government um, with the aim of stimulating uh, economical impacts within the five Flemish universities. So this was introduced in all five Flemish universities um, with a few uh, restrictions. 25% uh, of our budget has to be uh, provided for these business developers that are active within the faculties. 10% is reserved for daily operations. 10% of our budget covers patent costs. And uh, the remaining 55% um, are um, reserved for our proof of concept projects. Uh, well, after 15 years, there is uh, already a nice amount available for these industrial research funds. Um, in total, the Flemish government is budgeting about 50 million euros, which is then uh, divided amongst the five universities. And we have about a stable share of 30% uh, uh, of this budget on a yearly basis. How is this divided on a set of uh, performance indicators, which we have to provide every year to the Flemish government, and then they calculate our share. Uh, the first two are in fact not innovation driven, and we are happy that this year they also reduced this from 15 to 5%, because we're not really creating added value towards PhDs or publications and citations. Those are uh, more our uh, research uh, affairs department that are contributing towards this percentage. But we are contributing um, towards the four important ones, so three, four, five, and six. 
the amount of industrial income that Kent University receives uh, through uh, bilateral agreements, through research agreements, so collaboration that we have with industry, through the amount of euros that we get from uh, European framework projects uh, that was doubled in percentage, percentage from 10 to 20% uh, last year. Um, the amount of patents that we file and that are uh, so are submitted, but are also um, sorry that are filed uh, to twenty percent of the share, and the amount of spin-offs that we establish on a yearly basis. Uh, just a few words on these decentralized business development centers. We have about 25 in place at the moment. So 25 business developers that are spread amongst the 11 faculties. Uh, you get an idea here of um, the different application domains that they are uh, active in, from energy, clean tech materials, ICT, medical, etc. And these uh, business developers are very important for us as a tech transfer department because we really see them as a liaison. Um, we have 8,000 researchers. We're not able uh, to know what these researchers are working on on a daily basis. So they, in fact, filter the information for us and they de detect um, innovation opportunities at a very early phase. So they are, for example, looking into results that are coming out of PhDs and see if these can be patented. And then they bring this information to the central tech transfer office. And then as a team, we look at these things together. Um, they are also the liaison to the industry. So within their field of expertise, they have, of course, firsthand information on network, industrial networks active in their domain. So in fact, on a daily basis, our tech transfer department works together with uh, these business developers on uh, everything that has to do with innovation and bringing things to the market. Um, this is in fact, uh, well, just in, 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 in a few words, the same as in the, uh, the other slide, uh, we visualize this also in a kind of a brochure for our industry partners so that they know where our fields of expertise are. And then they have these contacts uh, also on the website and um, they have, let's just say, a single point of contact then within our university, which is very important if they want information within uh, certain application fields. Uh, our proof of concept funding. Um, how are we organized? Um, we set this up 15 years ago, starting like you started. We had one project type um, to facilitate um, proving that a certain technology works, not only on a lab scale, eh, but really on a prototype scale of validation of certain results. Um, so we start off with TRL uh, technology readiness uh, level two, but we go up to uh, six with our project types today. What we do is, in fact, we start off with results that have a certain potential for innovation. Eh? These can already be patented. Uh, sometimes they are not yet patented, but they're still in the phase of an invention disclosure form, and that we're looking into patentability together with the researchers, and then they can acquire uh, funding from our side to validate their data. Um, so we start off with, in fact, let's say the need of a researcher that wants uh, to work application-based, eh, that goes beyond the more fundamental type of research funding, which we're not active in. Um, and we try to create internal value, create internal value, in fact, to de-risk a certain technology or software or unique know-how of the researcher to bring this to the market. Because most often, industry is not yet willing to take these risks. And they look at the university partners to invest money, to bring it up to a level that industry would say, yes, I'm interested in working together with you on this technology, or yes, I'm interested in taking this technology into license, or maybe university is willing to set up a spin-off based on certain technology. So uh, we require uh, basically always insight and market potential for every technology um, that is uh, a part of, a, of an application. Um, feasibility of this technology of bringing it to the market, looking at the customers, looking at the willingness to pay of the customers, um, mapping, for example, uh, different application domains in which a technology could be uh, implemented, 
Um, so bringing uh, uh, competition uh, into a map. Uh, so several um, different um, parts or several different um, objectives can be part of such a proposal. Um, we have uh, today a budget of eight to nine million euros for these different types of proof of concept. Um, we work with industrial involvement in the evaluation process. I'll come to that back in the uh, lessons learned slides. And today we have a success rate of 50 to 60 percent, which is high if you look at the uh, success rates of, uh, for example, European projects or uh, similar project funding uh, on a, a national or international level. How did we start up uh, uh, the implementation of our different project types? Well, of course, you all know the innovation process that we have to go through with technology. Everything starts with an idea, an idea that has potential for innovation, can be a new material, can be a new appliance, a new production process, new software. And you have a concept in mind and you know what you have as a starting point, but you don't really know what you need in the process of maturing your technology. What you want to do first is of course, uh, prove that your uh, technology is technically feasible. You have all kinds of results on a lab scale but you want to make a prototype or validate some of your results or go through a patenting phase. Um, and a few of these uh, examples are uh, written down here. In the next phase, you want to go to industrial proof of concept. So in an industrial setting, proof that your technology works. So it's feasible on industrial scale, must be cost efficient, must be user friendly, uh, safety processes must be proven, etc. And uh, you want it to lead to new successes, it can be a license uh, deal or a spin-off that is being set up. And also for this last phase, you need quite some uh, things that you have to go through, uh, business plan, certification, demonstration, financial plans, etc. So what we did during the last 15 years was I don't know if you see my cursor, but uh, the start projects were the, uh, the first project type that we introduced. They were 75K uh, a year. And this is the model that we have today. We have the advanced, the step stone, the concepts, and the connects. The connects are a very recent project type we only introduced two months ago. Um, just to go through this, uh, I have a few examples um, to make it uh, a bit more uh, attractive um, to understand uh, what uh, is eligible for these type of funds. Eh? Um, so our smallest uh, project types, uh, this, we, these we introduced five years ago because we saw that the start projects which are aimed at proof of concept where sometimes for the researchers already a level too high. Researchers tend to have more explorative ideas. I don't really always know what they're working towards or which application or which market segments they should be focusing on. So we realized that maybe we should have a kind of precursor to our proof of concept fund, the concepts, um, which go up to 100,000 euros and are a bit more explorative um, uh, as a nature. Uh, for example, we had a research group um, coming from the dermatology uh, research group. The, they had an idea of making a cream calculator. So in fact, they wanted to validate a software that they had uh, to measure the right dosage of cream that a patient which has a, a skin disorder uh, should uh, spread over the body. Uh, they did not have at that point a patent in place. They were still uh, in the process of drawing up claims and looking if they could uh, validate them. Then I'm talking about the software side now, the algorithm that was behind the software. And they also wanted to develop the software tool, make it user friendly, and also have some feedback from one, uh, well, several, one to 10 uh, patients. Uh, so uh, they asked for funding uh, to demonstrate uh, these things. A second project type um, 
was based on a platform um, for uh, cancer. So in fact, a platform to empower cancer patients, offering care providers and industry a tool for informing people on cancer and the cancer therapies and what are the implications of these therapies and what are patients going through. And they wanted to inform the broad public also on all kinds of processes which are linked to uh, going through cancer therapy. Uh, here, the uh, professor had the idea of um, bringing a software tool to the market, and uh, she wanted to evaluate, uh, evaluate feasibility of building such a digital uh, platform. She also wanted to evaluate the willingness to pay of the industry for introducing such a platform and also wanted some feedback from different stakeholders. And in the second phase, she also wanted to identify early adopters of such a platform. So these were all things needed to bring such a platform to the market and uh, where we provided uh, funding. Then we have the starts, which are the proof of funding, uh, proof of concept funding um, the type that is, I think, most comparable to what your university is introducing at the moment. Um, I have two to three examples also here to make it a bit more attractive. Um, we had a very nice um, application two years ago from a student entrepreneur who had studied uh, veterinary sciences but had a hobby in martial arts um, and he um, wanted to uh, introduce a kind of sports glove for preventing hand and finger injuries. And at that point, because he was a student, he had to transfer his IP rights to the university. So first we made a contract in which we all stipulated these agreements. And then um, he showed us a few drawings that he had made on which points were important on, a, on the hand eh, and which fingertips were important to uh, protect when, when doing martial arts. And he wanted to make a prototype based on the technical drawings that he had made. So at that point, he was in fact looking for a partner, a uh, partner experienced in materials because he didn't know in which kind of material he should make such a glove. Uh, he was also considering uh, 3D printing, for example. So we involved the Department of Textiles and we also offered a budget to go through this prototype development and also look for an industry partner that was willing to make this prototype together with him and the department of the textile industry. At that Ingrid, I'm sorry, um, yeah. but uh, slowly we need to wrap up in yeah. about okay. three minutes. I also Just, had only yes. have this example. Okay, At that right. point, he also um, uh, patented this uh, technology. Uh, what did we learn? Um, strong engagement of researchers is very important because valorization has to fit with the, let's just say, the uh, criteria for going to re uh, career development. Um, after 15 years, we only succeeded in this last year. So this is very important to really get uh, the university backed. Um, the research team needs to be entrepreneurial and also must be kept motivated and quite often Personnel costs are very important in this phase. Interaction required with the central TTO office, uh, obligatory intake meetings are very performant because you can advise the researchers and go through the process of thinking through the application on beforehand. Detect opportunities early enough, also very important. Try to have people in place that follow up on research results and stimulate multidisciplinary research and try to involve different faculties that have complementary expertise. Inside and market potential, I already uh, touched upon, this is very important. Try to also involve uh, business partners very early in the phase of your application to get this feedback from industry. What is needed? What does industry want if interested in the technology? Internal proof of concept fund is really crucial to bring technology to the next level. So really listen to the feedback of the researchers involved and try to constantly evaluate if you, if you have the right settings, the right modalities of your proof of concept fund. We are constantly still learning and still evolving. Timely makeup agreements, very important. If an application requires a signed agreement with an industrial partner, 
do this on beforehand and also try to have it signed before you grant a budget. That makes things and life easier for everyone. Follow up on granted projects together as a kind of valorization team, together with the tech transfer office, offer advice together regularly, and don't hesitate to terminate a project if results don't look promising. Thank you, Ingrid. <clears throat> Thank you very much. I'm surpassing the 15 minutes. <laughs> So do we have any questions from our audience for Ingrid at this point? Yes, we have a question uh, how, from Sebastian. Um, how do you create and maintain broad awareness of, of importance? Do you include these points also in the education process like yes. study programs? Yes, we have a module in the education programs of our doctoral schools, um, but that is not enough. Um, we experience that we have to uh, very regularly uh, have info sessions like these, for example, for our researchers. Um, we have one next week. Um, we see that it's very important that PhD students are yeah, coming and going every year, so you have a very fast <laughs> Uh, you want them to have this information that is crucial for them. So we invest a lot in communicating this um, uh, several times a year. And also now COVID is preventing this at the moment, but we try to go to the faculties physically and really inform the professors within the faculty boards so they can communicate this information to their PhD students. And of course, our business developers in place are also very important. Uh, to create this awareness on a daily basis. Okay. Any other questions? I don't think so. No, so not maybe I have one question, Ingrid, if I may. So besides the, the individual support for the real uh, projects, what is your opinion in some overall positive side effects of POC fund in terms of entrepreneurial mindset and so on? Uh, absolutely. Um, what we see is if researchers come to us in these obligatory intake meetings, you immediately get a feeling of um, their entrepreneurial skills. And then we also try to uh, motivate them um, through this process. So it's important that the university uh, also, for example, uh, throughout the doctoral schools, educations offer um, the, let's say, the education on these skills also. Um, we try to give the uh, message that uh, not every researcher can stay at our university. You want them also to leave the university and do something with these entrepreneurial skills outside of the university. So we try to stimulate both. We can't keep all our researchers. Eh? That's, uh, that's, what, yeah, that's realistic. Um, so it's very important to, to um, keep on stimulating these entrepreneurial skills. Um, and this proof of concept funding is nice because you give the opportunity to cover your personnel costs and you see that they know within a year or within two years that they really have to do their utmost best uh, to get things to the market because that also can mean for them getting a job at the end of the day at this part or when creating a spin-off within the spin-off. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. So since there's no other question, um, thank you, Ingrid, for this very interesting presentation. Um, and we'll continue. Sedi Perspectiva Investitoria, ki nam je bo predstavil Dr. Andrea Basa. Uh, the next presentation will be held from the point of view of an investor. Uh, Mr. Andrea Basa is here to present his experience as POC manager and investor. Um, let me also say a few words about Andrea. Um, Andrea's current position is advisor to the Progress Tech Transfer Fund, an Itatech Italian fund on sustainability, and CTO at uh, Mito Technology. It's an Italian company. He's also a field professor at the University of Victoria in Canada and has held the role of professor in Italian and Persian universities. He currently also serves as a senior expert at the European Commission, GRC. He's an evaluator for Horizon 2020 and EIC Accelerator and senior expert at the Worldwide Intellectual Property Organization, WIPO. In the past, he has been CEO and CTO in many Italian and international companies. 
uh, in the context of intellectual property. Andrea has more than 160 granted patents. So Andrea, I think you have a lot of experience and also please right. share some of this with us. <clears throat> Great, uh, thank you very much. Um, yeah, so uh, I, I think Ursa uh, said, uh, said everything. First of all, I want to thank you for inviting me here uh, just to give my two cents on, uh, you know, on POC uh, uh, investing and, uh, and funding. Uh, as Ursa was saying, I'm part of uh, the uh, progress tech transfer. Fund uh, is a 50 million fund uh, that uh, was born uh, the 24th of January last year, uh, 2019, uh, and uh, invest mainly in, uh, in sustainability. In, in the, uh, in particular, we invest in uh, energy, water, and natural resources, uh, new and smart materials and services, so all the part of circular economy. Uh, food tech and uh, agro innovation. But again, sustainability, it's a pretty wide, uh, wide uh, area. So yeah, we always evaluate ideas that somehow can be reconducted to, um, to, uh, to, to sustainability. Uh, why we chose sustainability? Because first of all, Italy is, uh, is an emerging uh, country in the area of sustainability, it's actually the fourth uh, at the European uh, level in terms of uh, sustainability efforts and also because uh, sustainability uh, project in general they have a time frame that is uh, compatible with the fund. This is a 13 years fund so it's a uh, five plus five plus three, uh, five years of investment, five years of disinvestment plus uh, uh, three years of uh, grace period. Uh, that, uh, that, uh, that with it. So, you know, we have uh, uh, patient uh, capital that we can, uh, we can invest uh, in and then uh, give it the time to, um, to, uh, to grow. Um, in terms of how the fund is, uh, is structured, we have mainly two verticals. One is a traditional VC uh, investment in which uh, we have initiatives uh, that are already uh, mature enough uh, to sustain uh, you know, around the investment. And typically we get in uh, with tickets that start from a million and, and up. And then a second vertical that instead is focused on POC. Uh, for the second vertical, uh, we start with a POC investment that is around uh, 200K top, all included, and has a length of uh, around between six and eight months. And then our target is really to be able to do uh, one or two follow-ons, and the follow-ons are much more robust. So uh, we typically do 1.5 million for this for the first follow-on, and up to four millions uh, for the second follow-on. So it's mainly you know we build a path for the the company or even the team that then becomes a company uh, from uh, de developing uh, the idea up to, uh, you know, bringing to the market with a given level of success. Uh, and, uh, you know, everyone gains uh, out of that because we are a fund and so we, we, we need to make some money out of, of, uh, of this process. In terms of, uh, you know, I want to give you, you know, a quick uh, overview of the fund and then we can go uh, a bit more in detail regarding the POC. We start uh, from a TRL that typically is around five. Uh, we also set ideas that are, you know, 4.5, but somehow they got uh, in some way out of, uh, of the lab. Our, mm, our constraints in terms of fund is that uh, on one side, the uh, idea is, or the project is related to sustainability, and the other one that has a relation with uh, Italian research. So I actually interact a lot with all the Italian universities and the research centers uh, for, uh, for scouting of, um, you know, of, uh, of new, um, new opportunities. Um, so uh, maybe I can uh, uh, tell you a bit more uh, regarding the, um, the, the, we are five of us and we have a team that is quite heterogeneous. So we have experts in IP, uh, all of us are also uh, investors. Uh, we have also uh, university professors uh, uh, involved, uh, you know, from uh, Louis in Italy, from marketing experts on business development, uh, um, 
and we have a, a strong advisory, uh, technical advisory board uh, with uh, Tom Hackaday, uh, Roberto Castagno, if, if you know these people, they are, you know, uh, stars uh, in the area of, uh, of uh, technology, technology transfer. Uh, so I want to tell you a bit more about what is a POC uh, for, for us. Uh, what what uh, we call a POC uh, is better characterized by the word a targeted POC. Uh, so we, we, we typically scout for, uh, for ideas. And uh, during this process, we select ideas that are, uh, from, a, from a technical perspective, as I said, a TRL, uh, you know, 4.55. So uh, there is already, you know, a, a prototype uh, of some level uh, um, available. Uh, and uh, the POC uh, focuses in some of the uh, characteristic of uh, the, uh, the project that then can be brought uh, to uh, then uh, valorization from an industrial or licensing uh, perspective. So this is the reason why we call it uh, targeted POC, because again, POC, you can prove uh, everything, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, of, of your idea, but from a business perspective, the only thing that really matters is something that uh, you can bring to market in a, in a reasonable uh, amount of time. And so, uh, you know, we work once, once, so we do a lot of scouting. We have a platform in which we accept application on a regular basis. Uh, we get, uh, you know, we do this every four months uh, and, uh, and we get around, uh, you know, from 50 to 100 applications uh, every time. And in addition to that, also, uh, the door is always open and we scout continuously. Uh, either through personal relationships, uh, through uh, uh, you know participation to uh, national events, uh, um, the five of us are involved uh, in, in several committees of evaluation of ideas, uh, contests, prizes. Um, even at the university, I'm part of the POC evaluation of the University of Bologna, uh, um, University of Salerno, uh, Milano, and, and, and so on. So this allow us practically uh, to, uh, to, to access whatever is happening in, uh, in Italy, and as well as all the projects that are going to the European Commission somehow get selected for, uh, for, uh, for interview and part of so that, uh, that committee. Um, and so, you know, once we have done the, uh, the, the selection, then for us, uh, the, uh, the POC, it's, it's really, first of all, understanding, you know, what are the features that uh, we want to explore. We define KPIs specific to that, that will be used at the end of the POC to evaluate uh, the result of the POC. So if it's such a successful POC or it's not successful. Uh, for us, the very first 200,000 uh, uh, euros that we put in are, uh, uh, you know, almost uh, lost money if, uh, if nothing happens. But we are you know, willing to put to, to, to explore the idea. But um, if at the end uh, there is something of, uh, of value, then at the point in general, we either take an option on, uh, on the patent, uh, on the intellectual property, and then we exercise. We develop a company if the team doesn't want to, uh, to be part of uh, you know, industrial development. And another important factor is that we really interact a lot with uh, our industrial partners. So we, we have a pretty large uh, number of partners, uh, you know, Enel, uh, IREN, uh, Sapien, uh, ENI, and, and, and so on, uh, as well as uh, you know, other institutions, uh, uh, not only uh, not only uh, accelerators, you know, Polyhub uh, and, and, and so on, but, uh, but also, uh, you know, entities that uh, can be interested from a, from a business perspective to develop further and, and bring to market uh, the, the ideas. Uh, as, as I said, uh, again, we, we work with teams that not necessarily then at the end want to uh, uh, develop, uh, develop also the industrial aspect of, uh, of the idea. We, we can take uh, uh, charge of actually developing the, uh, the, the company uh, afterwards and, and they may stay with, uh, with uh, a role of, uh, a role of uh, advisory role. 
um, our main interface with the university is through the TTOs. And again, there are the very good TTOs that we love, you know, with which uh, we, you know, we interact really on, I would say, on a weekly basis. And we structure all the projects that are inside, uh, inside the university in three categories. The research one, the one that are in tracking, uh, that means that these are projects that typically are a TRL3, uh, 4, uh, that are very interesting from a technical perspective, but they need uh, a bit more steps to be mature enough uh, to, to push it to, to the funding. With them, we have uh, regular interactions. And then uh, we have, as I said, the POC ready projects that are the one that are, you know, good, uh, good to go. And, uh, and so, you know, with all the TTOs, uh, we, we have uh, this kind of relationship in which, uh, you know, uh, we get very, very involved. And this is essential, uh, the relationship with the researchers directly, getting the respect, getting a you know, dialogue open, and with the TTO is, is effective, it's very, very effective, and is bringing actually uh, significant, um, uh, significant results. Um, what I can tell you about, uh, you know, the experience uh, uh, related to the POC, uh, in general, we see that uh, there is a lot of technical experience from uh, the teams, uh, but from a you know, management and business perspective, uh, there is quite a bit of lack of uh, experience. Uh, and, uh, and so we typically compensate that associating uh, a mentor uh, or a you know, POC manager that can handle the day-by-day -day relationship with uh, with the team that uh, that need coaching and also uh, you know somehow uh, establish the path uh, to uh, to reach to uh, to reach then the goal of the uh, uh, the poc monitoring the kpis uh, and intervening uh, when when things you know are not uh, going the right uh, right direction so so mitigating an issue that uh, that can come um what else i want to tell you um, yeah, I would say this is, uh, this is about it. Uh, the experience is, uh, is, uh, is very positive. Uh, we are made, uh, we made uh, uh, more than eight investments, there are only five. Uh, the, fund, the fund is called uh, progresstt.et. If you go there, you can see all the information regarding, regarding the fund and also the uh, public announcements that we did for the investment uh, a bit more going to do uh, around 10 investments this year before the end of the year uh, and uh, the part of them are in the POC area and um, again it's uh, there is a lot of work that really need to be done uh, to support the POC from a, from a business perspective you know, really uh, also uh, allowing allowing the team to uh, uh, you know to follow paths that uh, are consistent also with the business opportunities that uh, can come up. I, I maybe I stop here and then if there are questions, I'm more than happy to, to answer. Okay, thank you, Andrea. <clears throat> so, if there are any questions, uh, you can post them to chat. Maybe I can just um, put this into the perspective. Um, the reason why we started with our own internal POC, one of the reasons, was also that a similar POC fund that Andrea was now talking about, so which is supported by the European Investment Fund, um, and will also be in place in Slovenia, maybe in a year on, or two years. So it's called Regional POC Fund. And one of the reasons why we started our own internal fund is also, you know, to get prepared for the bigger money and bigger projects. So I think this experience that you share is very uh, beneficial for us. But maybe can you share a bit more about interaction between the TTO and the researchers? So what is the key after the, the, the project started okay sure. uh, how can we both you know the tto can help the researchers and the researchers how can they use our help in order to really secure successful projects okay that, that's a key key point and and also we have different categories of uh, of tto so we have uh, ttos uh, with whom again we do all this uh, management of the opportunities, the project, and so we meet on a, on a, on, a, on a regular basis. 
Uh, and, uh, and then uh, when the POC starts, they typically uh, hand off in the sense that uh, then, you know, we, we have, uh, they are in the loop always, but on the technical side, we, we, we work directly with the researchers. Uh, and that works very well in the sense that uh, uh, TTOs is always involved, uh, it's informed, it has also the option of saying, but mainly it's more uh, handoff, I would say, on, uh, on the side. And I think this is the model that works best. Uh, no, because uh, because uh, we have a centralized management of all the opportunities, and then on the technical side, we we streamline the, the process. So this is one category. I would say the silver spoon of TTOs. Then we have uh, the hands-on TTOs, in which uh, they want to be present. I would say at every single meeting, and this sometimes becomes an obstacle because uh, uh, the TTO may not have uh, you know, technical expertise or, and, and there are the men in the middle. And so for example, all the paperwork need to, uh, to go through them and they get delayed and, and so on. It is still acceptable, but it becomes a bit uh, unnatural. And it's a matter of trust. In fact, we, we discovered that uh, once we really have the trust as of the, of the TTO, uh, and typically we get the trust from the largest and the, the, the best uh, universities and research centers. Uh, so, so many, you know, they trust us in, in the work that we do and really, you know, we, we are on WhatsApp or, or you know, Teams uh, and we, we interact all, all together. And instead, you know, I would say the, the scraper TTOs, the, the want to be, you know, uh, nosy TTOs, they want to be always involved. Sometimes that, that, that becomes an issue a bit for us and a bit also for the researchers because uh, they are de-responsabilized, the, the, the researchers, because they think, okay, everything, you know, we push this to the TTO. The TTO is overloaded because again, if we have like 10, 15 projects uh, running uh, at the same time, the TPA, they don't have enough personnel for managing all, uh, all this. And so we, we get delays, we get, uh, we get uh, issues on, on the side. And so we typically, you know, in, in a very friendly manner, we try to, to streamline. And this is also the, the reason why we put a, a manager. You know, because somehow we discovered that if we do this way, then things uh, become uh, uh, faster and, uh, and uh, you know, and, and more effective. But there are always two things that uh, need to be separated. What is somehow the, uh, the administrative and the target, the overall target of, uh, of the project, and then the technical aspect. And teams, uh, you know, research teams uh, on technical aspects, they are like uh, rockets, you know, boom, boom, boom. It's very fast. And that's on our side. We, we have also our own experts. So we, we help them as much as we can. And, uh, and so we want to keep that kind of pace, that kind of, uh, of, uh, of speed. And then, okay, and then we have the third categories of TTOs, that is the no response. So, you know, <laughs> for just getting at least, it takes months. And, uh, and so, you know, we tend to somehow to, to leave them alone, simply because, you know, the pace that we have, uh, for us, the, the proof of concept, as I said, is a targeted proof of concept in the short period of time in which we prove some aspects of the technology and then we try to, uh, to, uh, you know, to go to market, to find the right partner and then to push it uh, forward. Uh, and, and also do an investment that uh, somehow makes sense because you know, with, with 200K, uh, it's, uh, you know, it's a limited. It may look like a lot of money, but in fact, from an investment perspective, it's a small uh, return also for uh, so we are eager to try to move uh, the good opportunities quickly to uh, you know to a larger investment and, and, and push them uh, push them uh, forward. Uh, I have to say that that again up to now we have only few cases we have few cases of nosy uh, TTOs and a few cases of uh, very slow TTOs that will take forever. And overall, the response is uh, quite, uh, quite strong. And uh, I have to say, researchers are beautiful people. I mean, I, I love technology. So it's the relationship that I can establish with them is in general uh, good also because I, 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 I'm still a professor at the university, I published a lot. So I understand the issues 
that, uh, that come up and having respect is an important aspect. Uh, and they need to be put in, in value as much as possible. So the researchers are the, the main, <laughs> you know, the main mm -hmm. stars of, uh, of uh, this process. And, and so we need really to work uh, very, very closely. Okay. okay, so I think I, if I, I can sum up, the, 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 the interaction is important, but everybody should stick to their own role in the process. Yes, you know, the role can be flexible, but you need to be effective. Effective. Yeah. That, yes. that is the point. Okay. okay, thank you, Andrea. So, is there any other question uh, from the audience? I don't uh, no, 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 there are no, no questions. Okay, so thank you, Andrea, again. Um, I sedaj nadaljujemo z, bomo prosovinščili naprej, na vrsti je v bistvu še zadnja predstavitev danes, ta, ki nas veliko najbolj zanima konkretno, kako se lahko prijavite, kakšni so pogoji razpise in vse te informacije nam bo podal sodelavec pisarne za prenos znanja, dr. Matjaž Linec. Tako da, Matjaž, ste kar predajem besedo. Hvala lepa, lep pozdrav tudi z noje strani. Če mi date samo sekundo, da Podelim z vami svoj zaslon. Torej, v naslednjih cirka 30 minutah vam bom povedal nekaj več o inovacijskem skladu oziroma o posameznih farzah inovacijskega sklada, to, kar vas verjetno najbolj zanima. Trenutno smo v tisti prvi fazi kjer se lahko prijavite s svojimi projekti, razpis je odprto od 15.6. Povedali bomo nekaj, kakšni so pogoji za prijavo, kje lahko najdete kakšne dokumente, pogledali bomo tudi sebino, bomo jo preleteli. Potem naslednja fazo, ki si jo bomo gledali, je tisto ocenjevanje in izbor projektov, ki bo došli v tako imenovan ocenjevalni panel, se pravi predstavitev pred ocenjevalno komisijo. In pogledali si bom potem tudi tisto zadnjo fazo, da projekti, ki bodo izbrani in strani rektorja potrjeni in bo z njimi sklenjena tudi pogotva v sodelovanju, kako bi naj te stvari potekale. Zdaj, čisto na kratko, mogoče je kakšen je namen inovacijskega sklada, se pravi, v osnovi je pomagati inovativnim projektom pri nadaljnem razvoju rešitev v smeri komercializacije, Torej, na eni strani pomagati tistim, ki že imate ali imajo željo po komercializaciji, pa mogoče spodbuditi tiste, ki o tem so mogoče samo razmišljali ali pa niti niso, pa jim je mogoče to neka motivacija, da razmišlja v tej smeri. Zdaj, kot primer, recimo tukaj imamo navedenih par ali nej. Zdaj, če pogledamo neko tehnološko rešitev, pa recimo se pričakuje, da je ta zadeva že kot projekt aktivna, se pravi kot tehnološka rešitev, recimo, da dosega vstaj trl. Sredstva, ki so letos na voljo, torej proračun sklada letos je 70 tisoč evrov, pri čemer so sredstva na projekt omena med 5 in 25 tisoč evri. Zdaj verjetno se vam pojavlja vprašanje, če ste že mogoče kaj gledali prijavne obrazce, se nekako pričakuje tudi, da navedete finančni plan, kaj se zgodi, v primeru, če je projekt odobren ali bo odobrena vsa sredstva, ki ste jih recimo planirali oziroma jih navedli v projektu ali ne, o tem več kasneje. Zdaj, sredstva, ki vam bodo dodeljena izbranim projektom, seveda imajo spet so določeni stroški, ki so upravičeni in določeni, ki so neupravičeni. Tako kot pri vseh projektih, se pravi, prvi pogoj je seveda, da so vsi neposredno vezani na vsebino prijavljenega projekta, pri čemer so recimo upravičeni stroški, stroški dela novega oziroma dodatnega sodelovca na univerzi v Ljubljani, stroški materijala, stroški storitev zunanjih sodelovcev, opreme in amortizacije, opreme do 30% prijetih sredstev, tudi odeležba oziroma nastop na industrijskih sejmih, kjer se gre za to povezovanje, se pravi tkanje že prve, rečemo te mojitke, mreže potencijalnih partnerjev, ki bi bili zainteresirani v v končni fazi za, bom rekel, to vašo rešitev, tudi DDV je upravičen strošek, pri čemer je pa sam sklad nastavljen zelo fleksibilno, se pravi, da se je možno tudi, da se ocenjevalna komisija in prijavitelji nekako dodatno spremeni na bolj teh financiranih aktivnosti. Se pravi, se že dansko želimo čim bolj približati nekako potrebam 
potem iz nekega projekta. Kaj so pa recimo neopravičeni stroški? So recimo stroški dela izumitelja, ki so že zaposleni na Univerzi v Ljubljani, udeležba na znanstvenih konferencah in pa materijali in upreme za izvajanje bazičnih raziskav, se pravi tisto, kar ne dosega neke že recimo temu razvojne stopnje, se pravi, da stvar še ni dosegla nekega praga, bom rekel, saj začetne preverbe oziroma rešitve. Trajanje projekta je planirano, da traja od šest mesecev do enega leta, seveda, ker govorimo to v projekti v zelo začetnih fazah, je možno projekt še tudi seveda podaljšati ob utemelitvi seveda razlogov, tako da smo tudi glede tega naredili sklad čim bolj fleksibilen. Tako pa dejansko vse skupaj poteka. Se pravi, če pogledamo ta diagram poteka, se pravi objava razpisa je bila 15.6. Danes imamo informativni dan, sporedno sicer še tudi prejemamo prijave. O prejemu prijav dejansko mi na začetku prijavo pregledamo. Hkrati s tem tudi iščemo zunanje strokovnjake, ki bodo podali svoje strokovno mnenje. V primeru, da prijava ne izpolnjuje prijavnih pogojev, vas pozovemo k dopolniti oziroma spremembam. Dejansko imamo tudi določen čas, ki je možen za dopolnitev oziroma spremembo, minimalno tri dni, glede na to, če prijavo sedaj odate prej, pred 31.7. bomo glede tega bolj fleksibilni, če bote odajali prijavo zadnji dan, se bomo tega trodnevnega roka držali. Nažalost, zato, ker je letos zapadlo ta razpis ravno na to poletno obdobje. V primeru, da dopolnitve oziroma spremembe ne izvedete, vas obvestimo o izločitvi prijave, če jo dopolnite in nam jo pošljite nazaj, jo ponovno prikledamo in to prijavo potem pošljemo z unanim strokovnjakom, ki podajo seveda tudi svoje mnenje, ki je osnova za oceno ocenjevalne komisije. Na to ocenjevalna komisija naredi ožji izbor maksimalno desetih projektov, ki bodo povabljeni tudi k predstavitvi pred samo ocenjevalno komisijo. In na kasneje se bo ocenjevalna komisija odločila v izboru. V primeru, da ne bote izbrani, bote o tem seveda obveščeni. Če pa boste izbrani, vam bo hkrati ponojena tudi, vam bo hkrati ponojen tudi podpis pogodbe. V primeru, če pride do sklenitve pogodbe s prejemniki, sledi tisti zadnji korak, v katerem bom več povedal tudi kasneje. In seveda na zaključku tudi objava prejemnikov sredstev iz tega inovacijskega sklada. Kakšni so pogoji? Se pravi, pogoj je, da je vodja projekta oziroma prijavitelj zaposlen na univerzi v Ljubljani saj 50 odstotno zaposlitvijo, da je tehnologija oziroma vsebina tiste, kar prijavljate, vsaj v 50 odstotni lasti, v primeru česta dva lastnika oziroma vsaj v lasti 30 procentov univerzi v Ljubljani, če lastnikov so tri ali več. Pri čemer je sklad po pravilniku nastavljen na ta način, da se sredstva v primeru komercializacije vračajo v sklad. To pomeni, da potrebujete tudi soglasje drugih lastnikov, da se strinja oziroma da vedo, da se morajo ti stroški oziroma vložek vrniti prvotno iz naslova komercializacije, če do nje pride v sam sklad. Hkrati mora vsebina projekta, kar se tiče intelektualne lasnine, biti tudi prejavljena v naši pisarni. V primeru, da še to ni storjeno, bomo tudi pokazali, kako to storite. Posamezni raziskovalec lahko sodeluje le z eno projektno prijavo, tako da otremo čim več in tudi možnost. Hkrati ne sme biti sklenjena že kakšna licenčna pogodba oziroma pogodba v prenosu znanja intelektualne lasnine ali da se že nastavlja zgodba o odcepljenem podjetju in pa seveda kaj zadnji pogoj je v celoti in pravilno izpolnjena, te pravočasna vdana vloga. Kakšni je postopek prijave? Se pravi, postopek prijave ima več ali nej. Prvo je, da izpolnite prijavni obrazec, tega lahko najdete na naši spletni strani, pa gremo, bojte pogledati podaljši poti. 
се прави ППЗ и калони минус ЛРП и ХАЦИ. Матияж не видимо, видимо PowerPoint. О, пардон, само секунда. Окей. Само секунда. Zdaj pa bi morali videti. Se pravi, na naši izpletni strani izberete raziskovalci, inovacijski sklad UL. Tukaj imate v bistvu tudi vse informacije. Če poskrolate malo nižje, vidite tudi kategorijo razpisna dokumentacija. Med njimi pa prijavni obrazec. Se pravi, v prijavnem obrazcu morate navesti osnovne podatke, tudi na četko parafo dekana fakultete. Spet vidimo spletno stran. Pardon. Ni problem. Tako. In tisto, kar morate na v začetku tudi, bom rekel, prve točke, ki so nastavljene, so v bistvu tisto, kar so že en izmed kriterijo za prijavo projekta, se pravi ti pogoji, katere sem navedal. To, kar je mogoče ključno, kar bi želel izpostaviti, so mogoče četrta in peta točka, kje se izpostavlja projektna aktivnost in pa finančni načrt. Te dve točki bo ta v zadnji fazi, če bomo sklenili pogodbo, če bo vaš projekt izbran, bo sklenjena pogodba, bo dodeljen določen skrbnik iz naše pisarne, bo to tista referenca, ki bo, na osnovi katere bo skrbnik spremljal napredek projekta. Zato je pomembno, da je na eni strani aktivnost dovolj podrobno pisana, ni pa nujno, da je vse čisto detaljno. Torej, četrta in peta točka sta z vidika tiste zadnje faze projekta pomembna, seveda so pa pomembne vse druge točke za fazo, ko se ocenjuje projekt, ampak samo želim povdariti, kar je tisto, kar bo v zadnji fazi ključno, ko se bo odločalo o tem, ali je projekt uspešen ali ne v fazi, bom rekel, temu nadzora, čeprav se sliši zelo strogo. Če se vrnemo sedaj nazaj na PowerPoint prezentacijo, se pravi, je na eni strani imamo prijavni obrazec, potem morate izpolniti tudi izjavo solastnika tehnologije, v primeru, če je lastniko več, se pravi, tukaj govorimo o tem, da se solastnik strinja, da se vrnejo stroški vložek sklada v sam sklad, v primeru, če se zadeva komercializira. Samo sekundo, da se odpre. Pardon. In pa strani vode projekta in dekana članica na verze v Ljubljani pa rekirana pogodba o financiranju projekta, ki ga ravno tako najdete na naši spletni strani, kjer sem pokazal prej. V primeru, da že mora biti sedaj sodelujete s kakšnim podjetjem, je nujno, da imate urejena tudi pravna razmerja, se pravi, da je vaš projekt oziroma sedina projekta pravno zaščitena, tako da potrebujemo tudi pogodbo o tem. In v primeru, da še intelektualna lesnina, ki izhaja iz sedine projekte, ki bote prijavili, še ni prijavljena v naši pisarnji, lahko na navedenih naslovih najdete potem tudi povezavo do teh prijavnih obrazcev. 
Ta prezentacija bo objavljena tudi na naši spletni strani, te sem pokazal, tako da bodo te povezave tudi vam na voljo, da ne rabite zdaj iskat teh stvari. V poslanju bomo tudi pomenil vsem, ki so se prijavili. Prav. Tako da na koncu, ko imate vse te potrebne obrazce izpolnite, jih pošljete na naslov gospodarstva AFNA uni-lr.si. Zdaj, kakšni bodo kriterij pri izbiri projektov, so tu sicer je navedenih več točk, ampak če jih nekako združimo, je primarno referenca ekipe, se pravi ekipa, ki bo na osnovi prejšnjih uspehov izkazovala možnost, da dejansko sposobnost, da je pri v stanju zaključiti nek projekt, ki ga je prijavila. Na eni strani, na drugi strani tržno zanimiv projekt z neko realno finančno, realnim finančnim načrtom in idealno je še, če ta tretji del se pravi že podpora industrijskega okolja oziroma kakšnega podjetja ali pa že sodelovanje z podjetjem v primeru nekih testiran ali kaj podobnega. Ocenjevalna komisija, ki bo na osnovi strokovnih mnen in bo tudi jih krati na samem ocenjevalnem panelu, bo še iz članska in sicer jo bo sestavila en član predstavnih komisije za inovacije in en član komisije pisarne za prenoznanja ter Luija, dva člana stazunanja strokovnjaka, predstavnika podjetij in en član podzunanja strokovnjaka, in sicer predstavnik investitorjev. Ocenjevalni panel, katerega se bo deležilo maksimalno deset projektov, ki bodo dosegli dovolj število točk na osnovi preliminarnih ocen, bo povabljenih in sicer bomo videli, glede na trenutno situacijo, glede COVID, ali se bo zadeva realizirala z fizično deležbo ali preko Zooma, Nekako smo pa jo nastavili tako, da bo vse skupaj trajalo 15 minut. Pet minut je predstavitev same inovacije, ki jo bote predstavili komisiji. Pet minut bo časa za vprašanje komisije in pet minut za usklajevanje ocene komisije. V primeru, če se kdorkoli od prijaviteljev ne bo mogel udeljžiti v teku komisije, ocenjevanja bo to predstavil član komisije z ustreznim strokovnim vzadnjem oziroma skrbnik. Zdaj, preč hodno vse bo pa skrbnik oziroma tisti član uskladil in pogovoril z posamezno raziskovalno skupino, če se do njih če iz od raziskovalcev te predstavite ne bi mogel podeležiti in stvar predstaviti. Dokončno potrebitev se znamo za financiranje potrebi rektor. Lahko pa se zgodi, da ali komisija ali rektor za financiranje ne izbere od obenega projekta. No in prišli smo do tiste zadnje faze v primeru oziroma, če bo vaš projekt izbran, sledi podpis pogodbe, pri čemer je potrebno povdariti, da sredstva, ki jih boste navedli, ni nujno, da bodo odobrena v celotni višini, tako da se lahko zgodi, da v tem primeru tudi pogodbe ne podpišete, če ocenite, da ne bi mogli projekta s temi dodeljenimi sredstvi izperjati. Dodeljen bo skrbnik projekta, ki bo skozi spremljal izvajanje projekta na osnovi, kot sem že izpostavil, finančnega projekta, plana in plana aktivnosti, ki ga bote navedli v prijavnem obrazcu. Na koncu seveda rezultati projektov, ki bodo izbrani na razpiso, bodo pa tudi javno predstavljeni in na dogodko, kjer bodo povabljena tudi publika iz industrijskih in plagaterskih krogov. Zdaj, kako lahko pridobite sredstva, stvar poteka tako, da pred nastankom stroška prejemnih sredstev pošle do delenemu skrbniku projekta in prorektorju pred račun v odobritev. Skrbnik sredstev namreč sprejma stroške, prorektor je pa tisti, ki lahko odobri stroške. V primeru, da prorektorja ni, bo stroške oziroma pred račun potrdil oziroma zavrnil glavni tajnik. 
Kar se tiče javnih naročil, mora prejnih sredstv opoštevati veljavna pravila in naredila članice, iz katere izhaja. To je prva faza. Druga faza je pa prejemnih sredstev mora za vračilo stroškov dati zahtevek za povrnitev stroškov vsake tri mesece, skupaj s predračunom, iz katerega je razvidno, da je bil ta predračun odobren strani prorektorja in skrbnika, pri čemer ne sme znesek na predračuno presegati vrednost predračuna za 5%. Na koncu projekta, na koncu financiranja, mora tudi biti odano zaključno poročilo, katerega templet najdete tudi na naši spletni strani in sicer v roku 30 dni. Zdaj, tista zadnja lineja je, da v primeru komercializacije projekta se vlože kinovcijskega sklada povrne, pri čemer, če je prihodek manjši od dvokratnih prejetih sredstev, se sklad povrne le 50 odstotkov vloženih sredstev. Tako da dejansko imate še vedno prijaviteli, bom rekel, od tega neko nagrado. Za nadaljne informacije smo vam vedno na voljo, ali magistra Simona Rataje, ali moja malenkost, lahko pišete na spodne podatke ali tudi na gospodarstvo AFNA Uni in slojo PKSI. Sedaj pa, če ima kdo kakšno vprašanje, sem vam na voljo. Hvala lepa. Hvala, Pagaž. Imamo kakšno vprašanje? Za enkrat na četu ni. Mogoče pa bi se kdo odločil, kar unmutat oziroma vklopi zvočnik, pa potem nekaj tudi po zvočniku, mikrofonu, ne po zvočniku, po mikrofonu postaviti vprašanja. No, glede na to, da se nismo dobili povratni informacij, upam, da nas slišite, vse je to. Samo to mogoče bi jaz dodal, ker je prišlo eno vprašanje, ali bo prezentacija dosegljiva, tudi dosegljiva. Mogoče lahko bo rečemo, da bo dosegljiva na spletu tudi ta PowerPoint prezentacija, oziroma bomo poslali linke preko spleta, tako da bo možno tudi kasneje si ogledati. Dobili sem tudi eno vprašanje, kako boste zagotovili varovanje podatkov v času recenzije z zunanjimi partnerji oziroma z zunanjimi eksperti bo sklenjena pogodba o nerazkrivanju informacij. Se pravi, za ta del bo poskrbila naša pisarna, pisarna za prenos znanja. Zdaj, Razniče ste imeli še v misli kakšno pol vprašanje. Novo vprašanje, ali bo poznano, kdo bi recenziral zunanjih? Na žalost, zaenkrat če ne, ker dejansko pokrivamo zelo široko področje, tako da, ko bomo prejeli prijave, bomo povabili zunanje eksperte in bomo videli, glede na tudi čas, na to obdobje, kdo od zunanjih ekspertov bo pripravljen z nami sodelovati. Tako da trenutno za vsa področja še ni poznano. Imamo pa že določeno pazo ekspertov, iz katere bom rekel, bomo najprej črpali te kontakte. Še eno vprašanje. Pozdravljeni, lahko poveste malo več o pismih podpore strani podjetji. Ja, gre za to, da dejansko določena podjetja so mogoče za določene rešitve, tehnologije, že sedaj zainteresirane kljub temu, da projekti so mogoče v zelo zgodnih fazah razvoja in če je možno, da ta podjetja pokaže v pisni obliki interes, v obliki nekega pisma interes, da so recimo za vaš projekt zainteresirani, kar to kaže mogoče tudi na neko komercijalno zanimivo rešitev. Zdaj to ne rabi 
bom reko, ne pričakuje se nič bom reko, kompleksne ali zahtevnega v tem smislu, ampak samo to, da omogoče video pri svojih nadaljnih aktivnostih, da bi ta rešitev, vaša rešitev bila primerna recimo iz nekih določenih razlogov, argumentirano, pri njihovi nadaljni poti v smislu komercializacija oziroma razvoja. Ja, dobili smo še eno vprašanje, all expert signs a CDA before reviewing, ok, and we keep them anonymous. It's very important that the researchers get the chance to give a list of reviewers, international research group or companies they want to avoid out of reasons of competition, e.g. Ok. It's just a suggestion, Matjaš. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Sometimes I know. research groups work together with, some, with other research groups and I don't want them to know they're working. Yeah, I, I understand this. And then it could be possible that you just uh, address them as a reviewer at that point. It's just a six, uh, six I, know. <laughs> I know. I know. Uh, thank you. Ker jaz bi sem tokno glede teh recenzentov, večinoma se smo to iskali iz vrst podjetij, tako da ne iščemo to listo, ki je že Simona omenjala, so večinoma glede to biznis developeri iz podjetij. To se pravi, želimo dobiti ta feedback iz industrije in ni mišljeno, da se tukaj iščejo recenzenti na področju izraziskovalne sfere. Ampak prav ti so lahko sporni, ki je bilo napisano. Se pravim, na to, ta del pa se pač nekako zagotovi z podpisom NDA, ne, tako kot sicer pri sodelovanju z gospodarstvom. Mogoče bi se samo vključil Hrvoj Petković. Ja, to je zdaj zelo sporno lahko, a ne, če Če so recenzenti, če je recenzent iz kakšnega podjetja, ki je povezan ali vključen v podoben projekt, so te informacije lahko neugodne za nas, ki vlagamo. To je še posebej, če patentna aplikacija še ni vložena. Torej, bi bilo zelo dobro, da se ve, kdo... Mislim, vem, da recenzenti naj bi bili ko bi rekel, neodvisni in naj ne bi vedel, kdo so, ampak je pa lahko narodno, da lahko dobil recenzijo neko zadevo glih nekdo, ki ima vzkrižje interesov, ki in jih potencijalno ne bo predstavil. Mogoče bi bila tukaj rešitev tudi ta, da so, ne vem, da v prijavo napišete kot neke opombe, recimo, ki je vidite, ne vem, neko na vzkrižje, če je nekaj tazga, neka konkretna situacija, ne? da se pač s tistim izognemo. Ne moramo pa zdaj vlih spraševati raziskovalce, za komu naj damo. Lahko mogoče negativno izloči tiste, pri katerih misli, da je nek konflikt interesa. To bi bilo. Se mi ne moramo izberati, a ne, to ne gre. Ampak ponovat, če veš, kdo je, lahko daš svoje mnenje, a je to potencijalno. To je v primeru, če zadeva še ni patentno zaščitena in tudi potem pri teh predstavitvah in tako naprej, sploh če bo kaj tu javno, pa tako naprej, je to zna biti določene, v odvisno od situacije, od kejsa do kejsa, je lahko to omejitev za nekoga. To je počne. Ja. Ok. Še kakšno vprašanje, morda, pobuda, komentar, karkoli? Vse enkrat, ne? Dobro. Potem pa mislim, da smo počas zaključili. Aha, nekaj bo še nekaj.
Zdaj tukaj je malo razprave nove četu. Nekdo je napisal, da je tudi recimo pri znanjstvenih šlankah tudi ponovaj damo v recenzijo šlank, ki pa še niso recimo nujno patentirani, potem je nekdo odgovoril, da se ne vključi samo patentno zaščitene projekte. Zdaj načeloma je seveda to rešitev, razumemo pa tudi, da ima mogoče nekdo zdaj v teku projekta, ki mogoče je lahko zaščiten tudi v mesecu, dveh. To se pravi, tudi nekdo, ki ima zdaj zelo potencijalen projekt, pa še ni zaščiten, jaz ne bi takih projektov izključila. Lahko pa pol tudi mi zagotovimo, da se pač v najkrajšem možnem času tudi ta zaščita sprovede. To se pravi vsaj s tem, da se vloži patentna prijava, da imamo pol to zastavico, ki nam v bistvu drži glede prioritija, glede pač state of the art. Tako da mislim, da to tveganje nekako lahko na ta način izključimo. Da čim prej poskrbimo za zaščito. Zdaj, kar se pa tiče nekih ocenjevalna komisija je prav tako, pač bojo vsi podpisali NDA. Nekih javnih predstavitev pa zaenkrat ne planiramo, a ne bolj mogoče v tisti fazi, ko bojo projekti že zaključeni, da bi jih potem predstavili. Tako da v tistem času verjamem, da v letu, v letu pa pa bomo pa sigurno tudi že uspeli zaščitati te projekte. Mogoče je bila samo še nerazumevanje, ki je Matja Šumeno, da bodo prejemniki javno predstavljeni. Ja, prejemniki, se pravi, recimo imen prijemek iz te in te članice, bo dobo ta sredstva, ne bo pa vsebine projekta predstavljene, dokler ne bo zaključen projekt, dokler ne bo vse zaščiteno. Upam, da smo zdaj tudi to pojasnili. Ok, morda še kakšno vprašanje, bomo še malo počakali. Ok, očitno smo vse vsa vprašanja že obdelali, ni več vprašanj. Tako da jaz bi se rada vsem lepo zahvalila, da ste prišli. Vsem želim zelo, zelo dobre prijave in veliko uspeha in upam, da bomo pač dobro sodelovali in predvsem, da se bo ta sklad, da se bo res kaj vrnil v njega in da bo čez leta rastel in da se bomo tudi dobro preplavali na tako imenovan regionalni POC sklad, ki bo mandat tudi prišel v Slovenijo. Tako da vsem veliko uspeha in se vidimo k malo. Hvala vsem tudi predvateljem.